Because when you have relationship with higher power, that's when you truly feel security. And so if you would like your husband to start providing, no matter how old he is, the more you do the work, the more you are connecting to him, the more you're going to start influencing your husband because you're radiating this energy of love and happiness and peace. And at some point he will realize that you're accepting him the way he is. And now he will be motivated to do something back to you. And what he knows you want for him to provide and be a masculine man. Until you become a feminine woman who cherishes your husband, acknowledges husband, appreciates husband, and accepts his income, husband will never be motivated to make more money. Because in the modern society, we're so programmed and brainwashed by TV, by music, by all the movies that you got to have a big house, you got to have a Gucci and Louis Vuitton, you got to have this car, you got to have more and more material things. But my friends, if you are saying what's more important is money, yes, even if you or your husband going to make more money, it doesn't mean you're going to be happy. You will never will be able to get close to higher power, God himself and universe, however you understand it, to experience the true happiness. The more we're chasing money, the more we're heading further away from relationship with him. And so if money is really that important to you, the more you're chasing it, the more you're pushing the husband's buttons, give me more, do more, the more he will resist. Because our duty as a wife to accept his income. Boyfriend is not supposed to even provide anything at all. What he does, if he's chasing you, he's taking you to the restaurants, is he's doing it because he likes you. He's interested in you. And obviously he wants to get cherry, get in your pants, right? But husband, it's his duty. But again, husband will make more money only if you accept his income and the way he is. And as you acknowledging him and appreciating him for what he does. So I hope that answers. What is the duty of a girlfriend? You don't have actually duties as a girlfriend. As a wife, you have lots of sets of duties and a husband does. But as a girlfriend, if we're talking about spiritual knowledge, your job is to get to know him without jumping with him in bed. This way, you are respecting yourself, your soul, your mind, and your body. When you have so much dignity and respect and love towards yourself, you are teaching your boyfriend to treat you the same way, with love, dignity and respect. The duty as a girlfriend is to date him properly and not allowing him to get too close. If he takes you to the restaurant, you can go, but you don't owe him anything. You got to acknowledge, you got to appreciate him, but it doesn't mean you're going to say thank you and jumping in bed with him. So our job is to influence our man, holding our legs together without spreading them, having sex, and this way, a man is growing and learning what, who are you as a woman? What is your needs? He is getting to know you. You're getting to know him without jumping quickly in bed. Because sex is a duty of a wife to sleep with her husband and having sex with him, but not a girlfriend's. And in a modern society, unfortunately, everything is backwards. And the more a boyfriend sleeps with you without giving you the ring and commitment, the more he's violating you. And if he's violating you using your body and not getting engaged and committed to you, one boyfriend uses you like that second, third, and fourth, and that's why your self-esteem and dignity is going down. And the next thing, you don't even feel like you, anybody will commit to you. Your self-esteem is gone. Because now at this point, you are 40 years old or 50 years old, and you're still single, and you're not meritable. Because you lost your dignity. And so sex has everything with us women to how we feel about ourselves. So holding the legs together, that is your duty. <laughs> I hope that helps. Thank you, my friends. Heart to you. I'm old school, but it works for me. 
It works for women that I'm teaching. And it worked thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, and it will work for thousand and two thousand years later. Because there's nothing cute, there's nothing sexy, there's nothing pretty about an easy woman who sleeps around. Let's be honest. She has a name that I'm not going to use, and everybody looks at her and judges her, whether it's a man or a woman. So we got to have self-respect and train ourselves and train our men how to treat us. Yes. So I hope that helps. What to do if I feel that I'm losing my femininity when I work and I have to work for a living? Yeah, my friends, for women, it's the biggest dilemma right now to keep their femininity and hoping that they can have both femininity, softness, and being ladylike, and at the same time work, make money, and provide, lead, and protect for themselves and their family. So I will tell you, the best thing you can do, because you have to work, is to be unreasonable. And I know where women are so lazy when it comes to, we want to sleep in the morning. We don't want to get up. But if you wake up just 20, 30 minutes earlier, you brush your teeth, you brush your hair, you get dressed, you get the corner in your house where you either pray, either meditate, or do affirmations in your faith. Don't ever change your faith. In your heart, you know, whether you're Christian, Muslim, Jewish, or Buddhist. So please just do the spiritual practices. If you're not sure how to do them, jump on my YouTube channel, Alisa Abdullayeva. Go either learn how to do meditation, how to do a prayer, or how to do um, I wish you happiness mantra. And you have three different options. And if you do that at least for 10, 15 minutes, ideally you want to get to 20 to 30 minutes, but that will happen after five or six or eight months. Once you're going to get there, you're going to start feeling, even though you're working, you're still starting to surrender and trust higher power. And when you're trusting him, he has your back. You're going to start sending you different types of men. He's going to start giving you the opportunities maybe to work part-time or maybe to just change a job altogether. So you don't have to work full-time or work maybe a few hours. And the more you do spiritual practices, the more you're going to get the life that you want. I promise you that it works like a miracle and I'm not giving you theory because I already lived through that should I divorce break up to forgive him for cheating mm, yeah my friends cheating is the symptom of the problem that means the relationship or marriage did not work and that's why the cheating happened before a husband or a wife starts to cheat there was already a lot of things that was not working. There were a lot of things. The foundation was broken. And that's why people start to cheat. Especially men, I've noticed, they cheat when they're married to career-oriented women. Because a successful, independent, equality, feminist, masculine women, however you want to call this type of women, they're lacking love. They made sure that the career, independence, money, and success is on the first place in their life. And men and kids feel that. And so kids start to have deteriorated health. And men, they can put up with it for six months, a year, maybe some two or three. But at some point, men start to look around. And so therefore, you got to just acknowledge that somewhere there, you got to take responsibility for your part. As painful as it sounds, because yes, he did wrong. Can you trust cheaters 90% out of the time? No. But you got to also recognize that you play. You play the role in it as well. And so what I recommend is distance. For sure, distance. Move out, split, and at least for 30, 60, 90 days, depending on the situation, how bad it is, until you forgive him in your heart. But how can you forgive him is by doing the spiritual practices. And at some point, he's going to start coming to you. And if he's coming repenting, he truly is asking you for forgiveness and giving you specific actions and not just cheap promises that he will never violate you like this. And you see that he really repenting. And that's not after a week or two. That has to be at least 30, 60, or maybe 90 days later. And if you really feel that he realized how much damage he made, then you should start giving him a second chance and forgive him. But when you come back, you cannot 
punish him and mistrust him saying well you cannot be on the phone you cannot go out you have to be home by this time because this is all about you haven't forgiven him and you're not trusting him so you have to do a lot of work to truly forgive him but if he's not repenting you know forgive for your sake but that doesn't mean that you should give him a chance and take him back because if you take him back without him repenting i promise you he will cheat again Men who cheat are not masculine. They're broken inside looking for a validation. Absolutely. A man who is fulfilled and whole inside, he will never cheat. He will never cheat. He values a wife. He values a partner. Because first of all, you're not just a husband and wife. You're friends. You are everything to each other. And that also shares how much he doesn't value you. And you have to be, again, responsible to how it got to that point that the cheating happened. So it takes two to tango. It takes two to make this kind of mistakes. And it's as painful as it sounds. You have to take responsibility for your part. If a lot of guys my age are feminine. M my friends, all ages right now, doesn't matter, 20, 30s, 40s, or 50s. There are a lot of men right now who are feminine. This reason why they're feminine is because a lot of women became masculine. That's number one. And number two is because they were raised by single parent. Number two, it's usually a mother who is career driven, who doesn't have any relationship with her husband, ex-husband. And a lot of mothers don't even allow their children to go spend good quality time with fathers. That's how they're punishing their exes. And who is getting hurt is her son, who is growing up, becoming feminine. Because a woman, if she's masculine, she can only raise the feminine boy. Because a boy going to be learning masculinity only from his father. And if a mother is masculine and constantly controlling, dominating him and telling him what to do, he's just going to resent women altogether. And he's just going to become feminine in order to somehow survive his mother. Because masculine works only with feminine. But if she's feminine, of course, he will be by default masculine and would want to even protect his own mom. Because she's feminine. And so that's why, ladies, we have to learn about this very powerful two energies, how they work in a relationship and marriage. That's why most of my programs now are going to be about duties, responsibilities of wife and husband, because in the modern society, it's pretty much gone. Nobody talks about it. Nobody knows about it. And even if I see people going to synagogue or churches or mosque, they still don't know. And that's why there's a need for us to really learn the spiritual knowledge to understand what is our duty of a husband, wife, daughter, parent, son, sister, brother, boss, worker. We all have duties to ourselves and society. But we are just so lost chasing constantly just career and money, career, money, career, money, hoping that this fancy clothes, houses and etc. are going to make us happy. Big illusion, my friends. Big illusion. How to find a good masculine man as 21-year-old? <laughs> my friends, I shared that many times and I'll share it now. To find a good boyfriend, masculine boyfriend, masculine husband, you will never find it. It's a blessing from above. That means you got to be such a high quality, feminine girl, feminine woman, that God himself is sending you this kind of a provider, masculine boy or a man. That means you're serving people. You have a relationship, great relationship with your parents, with your girlfriends. You are in service at church. You're in service at school. You are in service to homeless people or cats and dogs or trees, whatever. You're such a humble girl, so feminine and soft and kind and loyal and sweet that even higher power sees how sweet and amazing you are that he's like okay here's this boy masculine boy who will take care of you they get that yeah otherwise we feel like i'm entitled well i'm sexy i have nails i have hair it's good enough so i can attract a good boy or a good man 
No, my friends, it doesn't work like that. You see, the way the modern psychology works, I see a lot of coaches are saying, stand in front of the mirror and keep saying, I'm beautiful, I'm sexy, I'm wonderful, I'm the best, I'm feminine. No, my friends, this is called self-lying. We cannot trick God. He knows whether you are good or bad, whether you are humble or not, whether you're loyal or not, whether you're feminine or not. And our duty as a woman, number one duty, is to be a feminine woman, to stay a feminine woman. And the job of a man is to become a masculine man. By the way, boys are not born masculine. The more challenges they overcome, the more masculine they become. He was bullied at school. He overcame the bullying. He became more confident. He couldn't find it. He couldn't get to college. He had to study hard. He got into the college. He became more masculine. He couldn't get a job, but he was working hard. He got a job. He became masculine. Men have to earn to become masculine. But for us women, the more we're earning money, the more we're becoming independent, career driven, the more we're degrading from femininity and become hmm, undateable, unmeritable. Nobody desires a masculine woman. Only, excuse my language, those feminine guys who are lazy, who doesn't want to do anything with their selves and their life. They're like, we have a saying in Russian, not chicken, not beef, not fish and not egg, something in between. And so a lot of men are now like this. It's not like meat-like. And so if you're a masculine woman, you're attracting those kind of men. And so in order for you to start attracting a high-quality masculine man, you have to become a high-quality feminine woman. And without the spiritual practices, you just can stand and believe in yourself how amazing you are. But this is more of more of a self-lying. Do you get that? Yeah, thank you so much for the hearts. I get that you are hearing me. And this is very important because that's what we're doing. We're covering up ourselves with a lot of makeup, a lot of uh, sexy clothes and brand names, hoping that I'm really someone of worthy. I am really someone really amazing and sexy and beautiful. But no, this is all very, it, it's going to be gone. In 10, 20 years, your beautiness, your sexiness will be gone. But your inner beauty is attracting the right people. And for inner beauty, we have to have a discipline. We really have to work at it. We cannot just hope that, oh, the happiness, the money, the good man will just come from the sky. That's not going to work like that. Do you get it? Yeah, my friends.